with the 10th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Darnell Wright, offensive tackle, Tennessee. Who the heck are you? What are you talking about? I'm Santa Claus. No, you're not. Welcome to Growl. I'm Gage, your host for Bears and NFL News, and welcome back to today's video, Growl episode 28. So this is an off-season video here, and let's dive in. So there is a lot of picks to be excited about in the 2023 NFL Draft for the Chicago Bears, including Tyreek Stevenson, our D tackles, Noah Sewell, Roshan Johnson, and Tyler Scott. And slowly but surely, Pulls is building a super team. And beneath this soon-to-be super team is a couple of layers. Layers! Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. So this offseason has absolutely blown by, and surprisingly enough, it might be like the first time that I'm not absolutely mad at the GM uh, going into the new season. Um, so as you can tell, hold up, let me see if I can turn around here. Uh, I'm not wearing a Cairo Santos jersey. I'm wearing a DJ Moore jersey. I am absolutely pumped about this trade. So let's dive in to the Bears, the offense and defense, and the super team that Ryan Poles is creating. So a couple of things that I like about Ryan Poles. He kept Justin Fields. He values his draft picks. Um, and that's something that Ryan Pace didn't do uh, very well. He, uh, he slowly builds up the team smartly, all while gaining picks. As well, I don't, uh, he doesn't keep old players, which uh, is a good thing to see in RGM. And he seems to be a really good drafter um, and finding diamonds in the rough like Jack Sanborn. Uh, Fields has a lot of potential this year um, and a lot of eyes on him, especially since Bulls decide to keep him. And it all begins with Justin Fields. We already addressed him and how I do believe in him as a player. I 100% believe in his abilities as a passer. Cue the clip. <laughs> and obviously a runner. Not sure how to make my feelings any more obvious, but to those of you who have your doubts, A, I understand, but B, leave those behind. And the Bears have had by far the worst offensive line for the past two years. Uh, but things are a change in. And for those of you who have you still still have your doubts, leave those behind. About Justin Fields and why he has a tendency to run, it's because of his offensive line. They sucked. And although Darnell Wright isn't the most exciting player, Justin Fields is. And we have to protect him. Poles is an offensive minded minded guy, and so that's why I trust in Darnell Wright. Poles also added Nate Davis from the Titans and added Braxton Jones last year in the draft in the fifth round. And we still have Tevin Jenkins, who's finding his place and, and his role in the offensive line. Center is really the only concern. I believe that they are so much better now, and not only will it give Fields more time, but the running backs. And there's three that I'd like to focus on today. We have Roshan Johnson. We got him in the draft in the fourth round this year, and people are thinking that he has a possibility to be a starter. Khalil Herbert, he was, uh, in my notes I have here, that he was a first rounder, but that is not true. I'm not sure where that information came from, uh, but he was drafted in 2021. I think it was fifth or sixth round, and then we got Donta Foreman from the Panthers. He was a 900 yard rusher last year, and uh, the main thing that I'm concerned about here is uh, their chemistry together and how the Bears choose to use these running backs. Otherwise, this is going to be a dominant trio of running backs. And to finish out the offense, uh, we talked about the wide receivers. We got DJ Moore from the Panthers. I did a whole video on that. You guys know that he's really good. Poles got him in the trade for the first round pick. And our two wide receiver number twos are Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool. Uh, Chase Claypool could end up being an absolute bust, uh, but he really hasn't had all that much time uh, to prove uh, his skill. Um, but I do believe that these three will be a uh, dynamic trio, and Fields needs to work on building a uh, relationship with all three of them. The defensive side of this ball is of this team is just as good as the offense, maybe better. Starting off with the best linebacker group in all of football. Historically, the Bears have had great linebackers. They've been absolutely stacked, and 2023 seems to be no exception. 
Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards were two free agency pickups that are destined for greatness. Both of them should work together like bread and butter. And Jack Stanborn seems like a possible, possible Hall of Famer in my eyes and could end up even being like a Brian Urlacher type. As if this position wasn't stacked enough, we loaded up in the draft and got Panay Sewell, his brother, Noah Sewell, in uh, in the fifth round. And this dude was supposed to be a first rounder last year, but uh, some doubts came in, maybe about his size, about his run stopping ability. Um, I have trust in this dude completely, and I'm pumped. Our linebacker group took a huge leap in free agency and solidified our D along with our secondary. And Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon, both second rounders last year, took a huge jump as well. They lead the second round secondary along with foundational players, uh, Jalen Johnson and Eddie Jackson. Yet we needed another piece somehow, and that's when Tyreek Stevenson entered the picture. Poles pulled another genius move and drafted a dog of corner in the second round to play along Jalen Johnson and Kyler Gordon. He played at Miami, just like a fan favorite that I'm thinking of. He led the NFC in both kickoff returns and punt returns. And the Colts have had a hard time all season covering kicks. It's Hester trying to work it back to the middle. Gets past the first wave, and here he goes. It's Hester inside the 30. Hester's going to take it all the way for a touchdown. And no flag, 92 yards. The D-line. Unless you guys want to continue and talk about Vales Jones Jr. and Cairo Santos. Right, the angle I saw was much different from what you will see. Yeah, no, that was way short. Very short, yeah. It's the penalties. The penalties, the penalties are the thing that they're going to be thinking about on that flight back to Chicago tonight. Uh, but the Bears acquired Demarcus Walker from the Titans and added Jervon Dexter and Zach Pickens, uh, I believe in the third and fourth round. Or uh, And all in all, the Bears have an incredibly solid team. They're working on building it up. And honestly, I continue, I expect Poles to continue working on this as he has two very solid first round draft picks next year to start off the team. And my projection goes uh, that we will be a wild card uh, team next year behind the Lions. Uh, but this this is something to be scared about for the rest of the NFL. The Bears are building a super team and they need to be stopped. Continue to be excited, Bears faithful. Thanks, and I will see you next time on Growl.